Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Today we'll be looking at working with line width. With yours truly, Steve Spence, brought to you by Conde Systems. Today we're going to be working with line width. Now this may not seem like it requires a session all of its own, but believe me, it does. One of the most frustrating things in the world is working with CorelDRAW if you don't understand what is happening with line width. So, let's get started. First thing, we're going to have to draw a line. And for now, we're just going to use the regular freehand tool that is fourth down on your toolbox on the left hand side. There are a number of ways to draw lines in CorelDRAW. If we go down to the little arrow, we can see a flyout menu that has at least a half a dozen. Plus the rectangle tool, the ellipse tool, the polygon tool, the basic shapes tool, and so on. But for now, we're going to draw a line. And one of the most frustrating things for beginners is drawing lines. It seems so easy, but when you do a click with the left mouse button and drag, this is what you get when you try to draw a line. Well, it may be cutesy, but it's hardly usable. What we want to be able to do is draw a straight line. To do a straight line, we will do a left mouse click where we want the line to begin. Then just slide the mouse. Here we get what is called a rubber band line. It will remain straight and we can make it as long or as short as we want to. When you decide where you want it, just do another click. If you want it to be a straight line, push down the control key and it will only create a straight line in one direction or the other. When you're done, release the mouse key again and you have a straight line. But we're really not here to learn how to draw lines today. What we're really looking for is understanding line width. If we zoom in on our line, you'll see that it has two nodes, one at the beginning, one at the end. Every line has to have two nodes. Here we have a line, again, that is point five uh, points wide. We can change that very easily by going over to the Outline Pen tool and selecting a preset line width. Oops. There's eight points, which is pretty bold. We can do ten points, which is pretty bold. Or we can go into the Outline Pen Docker and we can assign it anything we want. Let's make it 25 points. And there you are. We can make this any width we want. Now that's the easy part. The hard part to understand has to do with these nodes on either end of our line because they're telling us where the center of the line is. Remember we had a very small line and we had a node at each end? Well we still do. All we've done is widen the line on each side equally. Now that's crucially important because later on when we start increasing or decreasing the size of objects this is going to come into play. For instance, let's draw a box, just an ordinary rectangle. And let's make the line width a little wider than what it is there. Remember, this has already been assigned by CorelDRAW and it is 0.5 points wide, half a point. Let's make it 8. Now that's pretty bold. And again, watch the nodes. See where they are? They're in the center of the line. That becomes important because as we reduce the size of the rectangle, look what happens. It isn't proportional 
to the rectangle. Now what we have is a huge line and a little tiny rectangle. What has happened is this. We set this line to be eight points wide and that's exactly what it is. It was before we changed the size of the rectangle and it still is eight points. Whatever happens to the inside of the rectangle is unimportant to the line width. Now if you create a logo and want to change the size of it, that becomes a problem. So, let's go back out. We'll do a couple of undos so we can get our rectangle back to exactly where we started. And let me show you how to fix that. Here's our rectangle just like we started. It has a line width of eight points. And inside this, just for illustration purposes, we're going to put a big M. And we're going to call this now a logo. It is the Square M Company. And needless to say, if we were to do what we did before and reduce the size of this, the M just gets totally messed up. So we'll undo it one more time, go back to where we were, and now we're going to select that box, the line. We're going to go to the line tool, the outline pen tool, just like we did before, but we're going to make one change. We're going to tell it to scale with object. Scale with object. And click OK. Now, no matter what we do, it is going to maintain, whoops, forgot to pick up everything, did I? Let's go back and do that again. Let's pick up everything. When we scale it, it's going to keep the line proportional to the drawing. If we go really, 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 really tiny, as you can see, it just reduced the width of the line in proportion to the overall size. So that fixes the problem of line width. So where does this become important? Well, obviously, if you create a logo or some kind of design, then this becomes critical if you want to be able to change the size so that you can put it on something small like a piece of jewelry or something large like a license plate. You don't have to redo the entire job as long as you remember to scale the lines with uh, the image. Now this doesn't happen with text. When you do text uh, it scales automatically, but the reason it scales automatically is because it really does not have an outline. It is only a fill. If we take the text, let's take this one M and move it out where we can see it. If we take the text and we put an outline on it, let's put a red outline. Right click, hover red, creates a very fine outline around the letter. We can make that outline bigger and just for giggles let's make it three points which is pretty heavy. And now let's reduce that letter and go down real real small and you see what happens? The black all but disappears. Why is that? Because it's going to maintain the width that we have dictated to it when we added the line and that size was you guessed it one half point. Now there's something else going on in text that you need to know. Text is a combination or at least this one is this letter is a combination of an outline which is in red and the black center. You notice that when we put the outline on it, we'll take it off so you can see, it changed the size of the letter. Let's go back and put say three points 
and you can see it encroached on the letter. That's because half of the line is inside the center point of the line and half of it's on the outside. So it's going to affect our letters and it's going to do weird things. It's going to make it look really silly, especially on corners, pointed edges like that. That's happening because it doesn't really know what to do with those. So let's help it along a little bit. Let's select the letter and let's go to our outline tool again and to the dialog box and let's do another click. Not only are we going to tell it to scale with object, but we're going to tell it that the inside portion of the line is to be hidden behind the fill. And click OK. Look what a difference it made. We got our sharp corners back. We have the entire width of the letter as it ought to be. That's because our line width, half of it, is hidden behind the fill. So how wide is the outline? We had selected originally that it would be three points. And it is. But half of it is hidden. So the revealed line is now 1.5 points. This is true no matter what shape we use. Let's take the ellipse tool and make a circle. And let's fill the circle with yellow. And let's tell it to put a black outline on it. And we're going to tell the outline to be four points. Did you notice that it encroached on the center circle? It did. Let's get rid of that. Let's go back to our outline pen tool and the dialog box and let's tell it to go behind the fill and while we're here we'll tell it to scale with object. And now we have the inner circle the exact same size as we drew it but we have a nice heavy border on it and that border will remain proportional no matter what size we make the circle we told it to be four points. How much is showing? Well, actually only two points is showing. The other two points is hidden behind the fill. Now, let's talk for just a moment. We'll move to a clean area of our drawing surface. Well, we'll try anyway. There we go. And let's talk about another application where this becomes crucially important. Let's say that you have a control panel that you want to make for a customer. And that control panel is going to be one and a half inches wide by three quarters of an inch tall. Okay, no problem. If you're a laser engraver and you're going to cut this out, you will slip over here and you'll make the line red by doing a right click and then you'll go over to the outline box and you'll tell it to be a hairline outline which is actually .01 point. Now why we do that is is just let's just say that that's the way it has to be. Laser engravers see things that are less than point .3 points as a uh, vector cutting size. So this is important to laser engravers. It doesn't mean anything to a sublimator, but some uh, uh, sublimators have laser engravers and they cut things out, so that's why I mention it. Okay, so we have a outline here that is a half inch tall, one and a half inch long, and this is going to be a control panel. And right in the center of the control panel, we're going to cut a square. We're going to put a square in there and we're going to make the square 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. Now we could have used the control key and drawn it, but it's just as easy to do it this way. So I'm going to uh, make that uh, a square just by typing it in up here. 
and I want a nice bold box there. I want it to really be bold. So we'll go over here and we'll tell it we want it to be, whoops, we want it to be two points. Okay, now we've got a two point outline on our box. But we've got a problem. Because we wanted the inside of that box to be a half inch square. And it isn't. Oh, it says it is, but it isn't. If we go in and very carefully measure it, what we will find is it's actually only 0.47, it's actually 0.475, I couldn't draw it that precise, but it's smaller than what we told it to be. Now the reason it's smaller is because, remember the nodes? If we zoom in where we can see them and select the box, there are nodes right in the center of the line. So half of the line is encroaching on our one half inch square. So how do we fix that? Well, the easiest way probably to fix it is to just fill it with white. White can't sublimate as you well know. It's just a space holder. But it still hasn't fixed our problem. What can fix our problem now is the fact that we can go over and just like we did before selecting the dialog box we can tell it to go behind the fill and while we're here we'll tell it to scale with object because we're just always going to do that click OK and now we have a half inch box with an outline that is not two points wide but one because we hid half of the line. So if we want a two point line, we go back over here and we click on four points. Now we have two points on the outside that's showing, two points on the inside that's hidden. And so we have a two point line even though it says it's four. Confusing? Well, if you do it a couple of times, it'll really make sense. Okay. That's enough for line width for now. We'll come back and talk some more about lines and what you can do with them, especially with text, in another unit. But for now, this is Steve Spence saying good luck.